talk. So this past March, I was able to come back down again uh, with World Wildlife Fund Guyanas and Global Wildlife Conservation to conduct a series of surveys throughout the Kaichur Plateau. And unfortunately, I only had about a week and a half of field time that I could make it down here for, but in that time I found more species of reptiles and amphibians in one area than I've ever found before, and some incredibly unique species too, which I will touch on in a minute. So this was, we had to fly into Kaichur and then take a helicopter from there to Chinapau. And this was a shot that I was able to capture outside of, or leaning kind of my camera outside of the helicopter window. Um, and this is the downstream end of the Patara River. So this is, again, on the Patara River. So the Patara River is what the river is for Kaichur Falls. This area here is a few hours above Kaichur Falls, and there are still a series of other cataracts up, up there. Um, so literally where I was standing, I had to wade out barefoot with a pole to get to this area, um, trying to find all of the, the holes in, in the, the rocks where I was trying to put my feet so I could get out there. Just behind me was about a 65-foot waterfall. So, but I, I wanted to get into the middle of this to be able to capture what you know, the, the rapid region of it looked like. Um, so this was just above the falls. And in each of these areas, there's, believe it or not, a lot of unique fish species that live there. Um, so you know, it might seem like a, a treacherous area, but to certain species, it's vital for their survival. And then we have what the inside of the forest looks like which is these forested creeks with moss-covered rocks. And to me, this was especially special because it, it reminded me of the work that I used to do in cloud forests in Honduras, where you get moss covering everything. Everywhere before that I had been in the lowland forest, the rivers and creeks are all somewhat muddy. And here it was just this beautiful, idyllic mountain streams, pretty much everywhere, every few hundred meters you would cross something like this and then coming back at nighttime you had very unique species which I'll show in a minute that are specifically unique to this area. So now again to just go into some of the biodiversity here um, I have on the upper left here is what is called a bi-striped viper. Um, it is another one of I think Guyana has five or six species of vipers. Um, and this is an arboreal species, so it's important at night whenever you're walking not only to look down, but you gotta look up too to make sure that you don't, you know, unfortunately run into one of these. Um, and actually, one of the, the person who actually caught this thought that it was an emerald tree boa and caught it with their hands and took a very big risk in doing so. Um, Myself, who works with venomous snakes, I never, ever use the hands-on approach. I always have specific tools that I use. To, there's too much to lose out there, and when you're this remote, it's not very easy to quickly get back into you know, a hospital. So I, I prefer it's better to be safe than sorry approach. Um, so that's this species, and it, this is the same snake that I photographed on a white background. Um, and then here we have what is called a smooth-sided toad. So these are, these are fairly common species, but one of the things that's really unique about um, this toad in particular, so all toad species behind their eyes have these really large glands here, and they produce specific toxins. And this is the only species of toad in the entire world that actually is able to force their scapula, so their shoulder blade, into the gland, and they're able to shoot their toxin upwards of five feet into the eyes of anything that's trying to come after it. And these, the toxin of this toad in particular has been known to cause blindness in people. So next time you see these toads and decide to play with them, you know, keep that in mind. Good. So uh, probably my favorite amphibian find to date is this species. It's called the Groet Creek Carrying Frog, um, or the Latin name is Stefania avansi. And what you might notice, I don't know if you can, how well you can see it on this image, you'll be able to see it well on the next one. This species of frog basically glues their eggs to their back and the babies develop directly from there. Um, this species of frog is one of Guyana's endemic species. It's not found in Venezuela. It's 
close relatives are. Other species within the genus are found in Venezuela, but this one is only known from the Pacaraima Mountains on the Guyana side. Um, before this trip, largely because people haven't really been able to go to these areas and survey them, there's only been four or five records of individuals found that have eggs or babies on their back. And during this short trip alone, I probably found five or six myself, with the eggs being at various stages of development. So these are a few of the, the individuals that you'll see. So I don't know how well you can see again, but on the top left, here's a, a female that the eggs are relatively newly laid on her back. Um, whereas down here, on the bottom right one, these frogs here are pretty much ready to emerge and go off on their own. So it's believed that, I mean, the glue is really tight. The frogs will be able to jump in the water, dive under rocks, and the babies or the eggs do not budge. So it's, and no one really knows to this day, just because of the remoteness of where they're found, just when the, the babies themselves are ready to emerge. But it's believed that once the gills of the developing frog have been fully absorbed, that they secrete a hormone that will then trigger the egg to completely open up and that it can disperse from there. So this species of snake here is called the tropical flat snake. It's um, quite a common species in a lot of rainforest environments but despite being common it's only common around areas that are not impacted by humans um, it needs pristine rainforest to survive so even though one might eventually tire of coming across them on this trip alone i think i found five or six overall it's an important indicator species for the quality of the habitat which where they're they're found um, I don't know if anybody attended the talk that was given, I think, last week by the folks at World Wildlife Fund Guyanas, but some images of this tarantula here were included. So in the past, I have worked with tarantulas um, and collected some largely because no one's really done that in Guyana before, and there's a lot to be found. And I was walking along one night, and this particular rotten stump to, uh, right here, and you might notice this hole. And as my flashlight passed this hole, I saw this unbelievable glimmer of blue. I don't know how well you can see the blue on the abdomen of this tarantula, but it was nothing like I had ever seen before. So I knew that I need to at least catch one so I could take images of it and send it to my other tarantula expert friends. And the moment that I did, they were screaming about needing to tell the rest of the world about this find that for an invert, uh, invertebrate, this is a huge find. It's a new species of tarantula to science. Um, it's on its way back so that way it can be sent out and be formally described as a new species. But I mean, for one, there's there's a lot of people in throughout the world that like to keep tarantulas as pets. And when they're brilliantly colored like this, it you know makes people want to keep them that much more. Um, and it also just had some unique facts about it. I mean, within this stump alone, there were probably five or six, and you don't typically get tarantulas that live communally. Um, so it was, even though we at the time didn't have a specific person coming to look for tarantulas, and I did not have tarantulas on my permit, we were able to get everything modified so that we could collect one, just because this is one of the more important finds, among many others, of the entire survey that we did. <laughs> 